So, you know, we do our check-ins from time to time, and uh, I thought we would do one today around the uh, whole spiritual formation um, topic that we've been in and, and the book, Practicing the Way, um, and hopefully uh, allow our church to, to see how we, we talk about these things internally um, and how we're taking it seriously, that we're not just telling people you know, do these things, but we ourselves are really serious about doing these things, right? Um, Jesus said, come follow me, and he meant, like, come be with me, come become like me, and then come do what I do, right? right? And we, we kind of um, arrived at the nine, you know, key spiritual practices, because it's all about practice. We're talking about practice. Talking about practice. Uh, not a game, practice. <laughs> Shout out to AI. Um, so I wanted to start there, right? Those, when you think about those nine spiritual disciplines, which are, uh, I want to see if I can remember them on top of my head. You can, you can help me. Um, the Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to practice the Sabbath, right? Which is a day of rest. Uh, obviously, you got to practice solitude, which is to abide in Christ, to hear his voice. You got to practice prayer, right? We've been doing pray the Psalms daily. Um, then you got to, you got to be a generous person, right? Because Jesus was a generous person. Um, and how that's beyond just your tithe, right? That's how you help people. Um, and then you want to practice um, fasting, which we're recording this on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thursday we fast, right? Which is such a powerful discipline of just say no to your flesh for a few hours, right? And allow your spirit to grow. Uh, and then, what am I missing? I, that's, that's, that's five. Serving. Practice serving. Right? Jesus said I didn't come to serve, but to be, not to be served, but to serve. Right? For us is, you know, join the mission. Don't just consume, but contribute. And serve the city, right? Um, what else am I missing? Come on, we're going to do it from the top of the dome. We're not looking it up. All right? Um, Witness. Yes, you got to witness, right. preach the gospel, right? Uh, which is really sharing your story. Like, there's no pressure to try to change someone. Um, the goal is to just share what Jesus has done for you, right? He says, go be my witness, right? And just share your story. And then um, we're missing community. One. Community. Groups. Right? Which is twofold, right? It's the Sunday experience, which is the celebration, the gathering of believers, and then the spread out of those believers throughout the week as they did in the book of Acts, where they just, you know, hung out in each other's homes mm -hmm. to continue that, that, that beautiful journey. So those are the practices, right? Um, the book talks about how some are uh, inclined and some are declined, right? Some are, like, easy mm -hmm. for you to do, and some are the decline, the toughest ones for you to do. So let's start with the toughest ones. What would be your decline? Like, what's the one that you're like, man, I got to, like, I got to work on this one? That doesn't come natural to you. No, he's not my head up. I gotta say, Sabbath, to truly rest, because even the things that I enjoy usually takes work. Like I enjoy cleaning, I enjoy you know yard work, I enjoy even like um, reading books that help me grow. Yeah. That even gets me like a work mindset. But to really be present shut off things, actually look at my kids, listen to my wife, be outside, um, and not let my mind go to, okay, how can you grow, how can you get better, but really enjoy everything that I've blessed you with, that does not come natural to me at all. And something that I really got convicted of was actually on our Wednesday night class, Deliverance Part 2. Yeah. You talked about not everything is demonic oppression and influence, but you could just have bad habits, right. trauma, a bad attitude, just making bad decisions. And, now I and blame the devil. And blame the devil. <laughs> And I realized I hadn't gotten a physical in 11 years, <laughs> since high school. <laughs> so yesterday I went and got some blood work done. Hey. Yep, I got a shot, don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> don't be taking shots. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, I trust you. And got some blood work. And so it's like, all right, I need to actually take care of my body because it all comes together. So even with Sabbath, it's like, all right, let me eat right. And not eat sugar all the time. But Hello. Right. This, man, this man loves his sugar. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting delivered. <laughs> He's getting delivered from sugar. 
But even that's helped me be disciplined throughout the week where I know Sabbath is coming. That's why I have that slice of cheesecake. I'm, and, I'm at, and I'm actually going to enjoy it yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of Tuesday at 10 oh, p.m. Not like, ah, uh, <laughs> this ain't even good right now. But I'm actually enjoying it on Sabbath. So, again, taking care of my body. So that's the best part of your Sabbath, cheesecake. That's 1, great. <laughs> Love it. Listening to the Bible with some red velvet cheesecake. There you go. Man. Um, for me, I, I think uh, what, what's challenging to me at times is consistently praying at the same time every day. Because life changes consistently, often for me. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes it's difficult to find that rhythm. Mm. You know what I mean? And this past year, I've really been trying to dial in discipline every area spiritually mentally physically because you know we are a triune being like we we have a temple we have a spirit we have a soul so to lock down that that time slot every day sometimes it's challenging mm -hmm. household of five kids uh beautiful wife <laughs> crazy dog named charlie like it's like this sometimes but this past year i've really been dialing in the, these practices especially with this book man Man, the biggest thing that I, that I really taken from this book or take, have taken from this book is the importance of abiding and giving myself grace. Because e even in those moments where I'm like, man, I didn't, I didn't pray consistently at the same time every day, that's okay. I'm still praying throughout the entire day. Right. You know, Paul talks about praying without ceasing. It's whatever comes to mind throughout the day, whatever you're thinking about, pray on it. Pray on it. Yeah. Keep praying. Keep pushing. Right. It, doesn't, it doesn't have to be locked in at the same time every day. Yes, I'm working towards that as a goal, but flowing with, flowing with, with, with the, the, a lifestyle of prayer mm. has helped me. And I do get better over time. We're all a work in progress. Right. We're all consistently trying to get better. And that, like you talk, talk about 1%, the 1% has changed my life. You've been saying it for years. Then every year I get 1% better in a certain area and compiled interest, it, it, it builds. Right. And now, now you start to see in, a, in yourself, like, wow, I'm, I'm not where I was a year ago. <laughs> Right. Because these little changes over time have now I now I have stock now I can pull from that, that yeah thing. yeah you know what I mean it's good mm. yeah I'm a foodie so I would have said fasting but I feel like God is revealing a few things something I shared uh, not too long ago but I feel like God in this season in my life He's showing me well when I got saved He was my Savior uh, my Lord and then He became my Father and right now He's my friend yeah. and like with that friendship. I've come to understand that I have a hard time in community. It's mm. funny. I'm a pastor, and so you think community would come easy. Mm. But not just community, because I can have community and be at a distance, but if you break it down, common unity, it's like that unifying aspect. It's like I have to open myself up and let you in. Yeah. And that side of friendship has been hard for me most of my life because I felt like I had to pay my own way. Mm -hmm. um, and God is slowly, slowly showing me. At, he showed me at the right times, like, all right, now that I'm your friend, you need to learn how to be a friend and receive friendship yeah. in, a, in a different and more vulnerable way. Um, because if we look at Jesus' life, he had friends mm -hmm. in, his, in his followers. And I see that conversation he had with Peter, like, do you love me? That's right, three right, different right. times, three different ways. It's like him saying, like, I'm willing to be your friend or are you willing to be my friend? Yeah. So yeah. I feel like he's having, that, he is having that conversation with me. And then he's like, with the church, those close few people you have, are you being a friend and receiving their friendship? Yeah. So I feel like community in a, has been the hardest one to kind of lean towards because in the church world, um, you can have the charisma for it and make it seem like mm. you know how to do community. Right, but right. like, G's like, no, nah, you got to break that right. stuff. That, that's trash, right. what I'm trying yeah, to do yeah, 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 compared yeah. to what I'm trying to do. Right. So I got, feel like in this season with this book, what we're in, God is revealing like, you need to really work in community, really open yourself up to those areas in your life. And you've said that, Pastor. Therapists wouldn't be backed up if people simply had real friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. And think about it, like, these are the things that God already gave you. Just you need to cultivate them. Right. right? And, like, I, I'm thinking about maybe doing a, a class on just the discipline of confession because mm -hmm. a lot of it is about that, right? Yeah. Do you have a safe space to just confess your sins? or the struggles or the battles or whatever's going on as opposed to internalize everything right. and let that consume you. And that's why I think a lot of the struggle with mental health is coming from. Right. People don't have an outlet, a healthy outlet right, with to go to. Mm -hmm. And what do you end up doing? You either implode on the inside or you go in the wrong outlets to right. try to find. You know, just yesterday someone said to me, I have to pray 
and they were saying like, wow, I didn't know all I needed was a good community and Jesus yeah. to overcome my mental yeah. health. Yeah. She's like, I was out there doing A to wow. Z, yeah, yeah. trying to find it. It's like, I come here and in a span of four months, I'm a new person. Yeah. Like this is literally a testimony yesterday. Right. And it was cool, not just him, this person, but multiple person yesterday after prayer. Maybe God knew I needed some encouragement. <laughs> People coming up and be like, this place is changing my life. Mm. And what is it? You know, it's about what? It's about having a space that's conducive for people to be real and to practice these things. Because you gotta practice them, right? right? So I wanted to read Galatians because of that. You know, we, we, we touched on this uh, last Sunday that uh, that compound interest, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Galatians 6, it says, don't be misled. You cannot, be, you cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant mm -hmm. or you reap what you sow, right? Those who only live to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay in death from that sinful nature, which I've been saying sarcastically lately. Keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. Because your natural self will jack you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You just think about the things we just touched on, right? Each one of those things we just touched on is stuff that we've done for a long time. Like you keep feeding that sugar, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to get a mess. Right. You know what I mean? And, and this, the Bible is so honest. It says, Let's listen, that, that's going to jack you up sooner or later. Right. You know? But then he goes on to say, but those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So here's the thing, though. Don't get tired of doing what's good, right? Because right? it's compound interest. Right. It's 1%. You know, it's not to get caught up on, I didn't do it right today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Right, it's right, like, right. I hope people don't see that. Like, when we say saying that in practice, we're not saying you're going to get it right every single day. Right. But it's like, it's practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're not saying work harder. We're saying practice, mm -hmm. you know? He says, at the right time, it will reap a harvest, a blessing, if we don't give up. Right? And that's the thing, because this thing is a long obedience in the same direction. It's not tomorrow you're going to see all the results. It's yeah. like this woman said yesterday, wow, four months later, I'm seeing my life is different. Yeah. You know? And then I think, man, imagine she keeps practicing. What's going to happen in the right. next six months? Because or, or, we can't, you can't put spiritual growth on a metrics, right? Because you never know how life's going to hit you. Mm -hmm. But it's like that constant, you know, compound interest is what matters down the line, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And something that's been very frustrating for me is when I try to be really good at all nine at the same exact right. time. Right. Right. Yeah. And I'm trying to mold myself into the discipline instead of what Richard Foster says, aim at the freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, if you're trying to be disciplined for the sake of being disciplined, that's sucking life out of you. Right, right. And we're all busy. Everybody's busy. Everybody has a full plate. Right. And we all have things that are important, things that are urgent, but how many of us are actually slowing down to say, okay, Lord, what is your priority today? Right. What do I need to focus on today? Mm -hmm. And when we live that way, it's like, oh, okay, I didn't pray at my specific place this time today, but I prayed in the car. Or I didn't get to sit down with my physical Bible, but I listened to it on my way to work. Right. And then on my lunch break, I opened it up and prayed. And so it's like, okay, I don't have control over all the important things, urgent things, or even like the things that need my priority. Mm -hmm. But in day to day, Lord, where are you today? I surrender today and I trust you with it. And I'm going to do my best. Right. And that's something I really got convicted with recently. It's like, am I really giving my best? Mm -hmm. You know, we've been singing the song out of the Psalms. And Moses says, Lord, teach us to redeem our time. And like really looking at my day, like, Lord, am I really making the most of my time? Yeah. And even like my phone technology, it's like, it's not all bad. Like there are Bible plans that are incredible. Right. And it's helped me structure like, okay, I'm going to read two chapters in the morning and two chapters before I go to bed. And doing that consistently, it's like, wow, I'm going through the Bible instead of like, oh, I need an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, teach me, Lord, to redeem my time. So that way my studying time could be my studying time. My abiding time is my abiding time. And um, yeah, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the biggest things for me is that's been the, the game changer for my life. And when I don't do it, I can tell my day's all jacked up is winning my morning. Mm. If I can win my morning, for me, it's gym and Jesus all day. Yeah, if I can yeah. get to the gym in the morning, that ride there, I tried it this past time um, a couple a couple days ago. I was like, all right, this time when I go to the gym, I'm going to pray. I'm driving. I'm like, God, I can't think of a word to say. <laughs> like, nothing's coming to mind because I usually just play the Bible and let that kind of just come over me and then when I get to the gym get all that endorphins in me and then when I get in my car that's when I feel like I can actually connect yeah. mm -hmm. and if I win my morning I get my heart pumping I get the blood flowing through my body I'm actually awake and I try to win and I so I've tried to witness softly at the gym 
So I go in there intentionally, like, I do want that pump, but I also want that spiritual pump at the same time. And so it gets my mind going when I'm at the gym. And then when I get in the car, I'm like, God, I don't know if I went, 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 went. One, one, one. <laughs> I was gonna get there. No, I was, I was gonna get there. <laughs> I was about to go Spanish. <laughs> I won. If not, that's okay. As long as I just showed up and I can connect with you. Let me keep connecting yeah. with you. And one thing you said a couple weeks ago is schedule that time. So every time I come into work, right in the morning, I'll go right to the chapel and sit there for as long as I need. Maybe it's usually ten minutes, fifteen minutes, where I allot that time. And I've done that pretty consistently and I feel the difference like in the redeeming of the time like in the morning when I rise which is a song mm. like God redeems that time for me and he slows me down if I can win the morning mm. my full day he set it up because he we already we already started we started early together I feel like that's been a, a thing I've really been intentional about which has been a game changer yeah for yeah. sure mm. isn't it funny God I don't know what to pray but to pray right he loves that too mm. he lo- I came to the start like God wants me to expose me to him so that he can get to know me, even though he already knows me. Right. He wants me to expose me to him. Mm. Because we have this idea, like, I don't have to tell him anything because he already knows. But he wants us to hear what's in us come out of us and give it to him, to, let him, to invite him in for prayer. But what's, what's interesting about that prayer to me is actually to get to know yourself. Right. Because the more real you are with God, the more you become oh, real to you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I think even that in itself, when people are like, I don't know what to pray, it's like, then that, that means you don't know yourself. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not in tune with your emotions and feelings. Right. And that's why I love about the, the, like I recommend the Pause app because of that. Like if you do that 30-day resilience, it's teaching you mm-hmm. how to be in touch with your feelings right. and your emotions, mm-hmm. especially for guys like we have a hard time, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, vocali- verbalizing how we feel. Mm-hmm. But we're going through the Psalms. What I love about the Psalms is the feelings are raw. Absolutely. They're real. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... The goal was that, hey, here's a template. Here's how real these guys are. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? About their prayer. What they're talking to this God about. Yeah. You know, you would think, like, man, you know who you're talking to? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? They know who they're talking to. They're talking yeah. to Almighty God, but also a God who wants relationship, who wants intimacy. Yeah. So he doesn't want to hear a version of you right. who's not the real you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So most guys are like, come on, Lynn. Can we cut the crap? Yeah. Can we, yeah. can we talk yeah. <laughs> about what's really going on? And I never thought about it this way, but like so many of the psalmists use beautiful imagery to describe how they're feeling. Yeah. That's talking about like, that's being very self-aware. Yeah. That I know what I'm feeling, that I can describe it. And I know who you are, that I can describe you as a tower, a fortress. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's fascinating about David, right? David to me is a man's man. Right. Because the dude could go on the battlefield with the sword kill and kill hundreds. a bunch of people. Even God told him that. He's like, bro, you got a lot of blood in your you hands. Too much blood. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't be building a temple. But, I, but he has no problem expressing himself in a poetic way. Like, how cool is that? Like, here's a dude who's a warrior, but he's also a poet. He's also a worship leader. Right? He's also a very feeling-driven dude. Passionate. To, to a certain extent, it's like, yo, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I'm thinking about praying about, you know, doing a, a talk on David for Father's Day. Mm-hmm. Talking about legacy. Because you got to see this fullness of his life. It's not always good. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, he's showing you in the Psalms. Right. These battles, these struggles with his own family. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was talking about, thinking about legacy, right? right? But I love the fact that he had no problem owning right. his feelings and emotions. Right. And put himself out there. Because a lot of dudes might think, oh, I, prayer sounds feminine. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, David would kill you for saying that. Literally. Because he was a man's man. Right. You know, but he loved the Lord. Like, you could be a man's man and love God with all your heart, you know? So, it's crazy because I think, I think we, uh, we honestly have to free people from that mindset of, like, I don't know how to pray. Mm-hmm. Or I need to pray a specific way or, or a certain kind of way. Like, no. Or I don't have the words. No, you just say what's on your heart. Oh, yeah. Talk to him like you're talking to us. Like, that's what God's looking for. Absolutely. Like, if my son came up to me and said, Father, thou art so, I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Imagine. <laughs> you can't have ice cream. It's nine o'clock. Yeah, right. Because daddy, I'm hungry. Daddy, I'm, it, we we when we when we have God in the lens of Father, that guard is down. Mm. Yes, he is. He is the King of Kings. He's the Creator of heaven and earth. But he's a Father, mm. so we can come to him like, Dad, Daddy, like I need this. Well, I'm 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 angry. Mm. It took me it took me years to let out an angry prayer. Mm. Now I. I Hey, if I'm angry, it, it, Lord, mm-hmm. this is what it is. Right, right. This is how it's coming out. 
this is this is how I need to say it. Mm -hmm. And some people are scared to go. And 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 maybe it was uh, that that feeling of like, oh, I can't I can't go go to him in that tone or that have that anger. But like, no, he he welcomes it. Like, no, I need to hear I need yeah. to hear that emotion. I need to hear those feelings. Say it how you feel it. Like a lot of times, you know, if you're in church for a long time, you feel like, oh, I don't pray like him or her and. We actually have to unlearn that because that's that's a cultural thing where right. where we weren't supposed to operate like that. Like David is so raw, right. so real in those Psalms. Like one minute he says, "Lord, you're so you're so amazing. Lord, why are you leaving me? Why do you why why am I out here struggling?" Like he goes up and down. That's emotion. Like and God welcomes that. Mm -hmm. So we we can't we can't come to him like I I can't really be real with him because he's God. No, he he says no. Be real with me. Yeah. I need that. I need that from you. Well, that's why I've always said that the the right understanding of prayer is is a compound word because it's there's therapy in it. Right. Mm -hmm. There's counseling. Mm -hmm. There's venting. Mm -hmm. You know. Then there's there's grieving. Mm -hmm. There's celebrating. All the feelings of right, life, right, right. like wrapped up into this relationship with with the Almighty God mm -hmm. who created you, wired you already. Yeah. Right. To have those feelings and emotions, and if we don't go there then we're never going to cross over into a real relationship. Right, It'll just right. be religious. Right. And unfortunately, a lot of people, that's how they know. They just know religion. They just right. know the formality yes. right. as opposed to a relationship, mm -hmm. right. which allows you to come in. Like Jesus even said, it, like, well, you, you don't, if, you are, if your kids ask for bread, you don't give them a scorpion. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's like, well, if you, who are sinful, know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more, how much more right. the Father right. wants to. But again, I think God... I think I think God steps back and goes, I'll wait till you're real. Yeah, that's Honestly, right. that's you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Right. We'll Amen. talk when you're real. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, you, you, I don't know if your kids do this, but sometimes, they, I know they, they want to talk about something, they'll just like circle around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can right tell, like, something's on your mind. Yeah. I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah. You, know I mean? yeah. you know, I see that, especially, awesome. especially with my older son. You know what I mean? He comes, yeah. hey, Dad, mm -hmm. uh, he'll pacing. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he wants to talk about something. Yeah. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him get comfortable. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'll just pretend yeah, yeah, yeah. until you're ready. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, something's on your mind. You yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, you know? But you create that atmosphere for them, right? right? That hey, you know you can come and talk about anything. Right. right. You know, like my daughter, Grace, has no problem just be like, Dad, I'm struggling right now. Because again, we've created that relationship. It's like my, I'm in my, I'm in my field. Or I'm in my mind. It's like, okay, let's mm. sit down, let's talk. Yeah, talk about right. it. You know what I mean? And it's like, if I could do that, a knucklehead. How much more the father's like, and the other part of parenting is so cool is that God will speak to you through those moments. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you discipline your kid. God's like, yes, you too, knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. and that's I love that. I love the fact that it's so real that He will interject in those moments and speak to you. Yes. You know what I mean? And minister to you because He's trying to show you, like, hey. I'm a father too, right. mm -hmm. right. and who you didn't think put that in you? Right. right. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. Come on. So when you're not tapping into the father, you're missing right. what it means to actually be a father or a husband right, right, or right. a friend. You know what I mean? Or just someone who's trying to figure out life. You know. Yeah, yeah. So. And if we can't be honest with God, of course we're going to hide from other people. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. If we can't be honest about what's really good, and isn't that repentance? It's acknowledging. Lord, I have unhealthy desires. Yeah. I have done wrong. I'm owning this. I need you to change me. And we just read this on Sunday. Yeah. He gives you the desire to do what's pleasing to him. Right. So you hiding, you said this a couple of weeks ago, the more we hide, the less we heal. You have to be honest. And I think the lie that I believed in my life. Shout out to John Comer for that. That was, that was him. That was him. <laughs> you know. It's like the more I, th I thought before, if I hide something, it will just go away. Hmm. But in fact, it's just getting deeper roots and growing in the dark, and it's gonna rear its ugly head. Yeah. But it's me being honest with people close to me, and first and foremost, God, that exposes that thing so that way he can uproot it and heal, and replace it with the fruit of his spirit. Yeah, which is fig leaves, right? That's what Adam and Eve did when they realized, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And what did they do immediately? Try to hide, mm -hmm. and sow fig leaves right. upon them. And God, knowing that, gives them a chance to own it and says, where are you? Mm -hmm. He wasn't saying, where are you physically? Right. Yeah, he was saying, like, where are you? Like, like yeah, yeah, in your mind, you in your spirit, right, in, your, right. in, your, in, your, in your being right now. Right. And what does he do? He, he brings them to accountability, but then he clothes them, right? He sacrifices for the first time in the history of humanity. Mm. We see God sacrifice an truth animal. And grace. Right? Mm. Exactly. The truth yeah. and grace is there. And he says, let me replace your fig leaves with actually something that's going to help you. Mm. Before I banish you, though, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like God's for like, your benefit. Yeah, yeah. for your benefit. Yeah. Like God's not gonna like 
let you get away with anything, mm. but he's going to heal you in that process. He never exposes you just to expose you. He exposes right. you to heal you. Absolutely. But right, he does right. ask you first, Absolutely. where are you? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's where we can, we can keep hiding mm -hmm. right? or we can own it and say, God, I messed up. Why do you yeah. think we hide? I know for me, it's if I open up to you, you can judge me and I won't be loved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, well, I think you, you, I think you nailed it. You know, I think we hide because we have, we are afraid of how people are going to see us. Right. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of how people are going to perceive us mm -hmm. because all of a sudden, oh, wow, I own something out loud that I've been feeling for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I don't think guilt is a bad thing. I think shame is a bad thing. Right. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? I think guilt is how God wires you. So you know right from wrong. Yeah. Right. Now, guilt can turn into shame, mm -hmm. and now you could be identified with that thing as opposed to owning right, it. Right, right, right. Right? And release it. Right? So, being ashamed is not God's plan. Right. Right? But hiding is also not His plan. Right. right? Freedom comes through confession mm -hmm. and, and being set free. Because, I mean, everybody could say this, right? When you actually own something, it's just that burden just lifted off. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. David talks about that in one of his Psalms, right? He's like, man, the more. I held on to that thing, the more I felt like I was wait on the inside, I was dying. What, yeah. like a year? Well, Psalm 51 was a year later that he confessed. But Psalm 32, he talks about, I don't know what, what the event was when he was like, man, I felt like I was wasting away on the inside. Mm. So we are afraid to be seen for what we actually are. Mm. Because we like to project right. yeah, yeah, yeah. who we actually are versus right. who we really are. Mm. Right. And with God, you can't really hide. Like, he knows you. you like, again, David, Psalm 139, when we get there. I hope people keep, uh, my goal is to keep praying the Psalms yeah. all year. Yeah, yeah, keep it going. You know, I hope people continue to see that. Like, we get to Psalm 139, and he talks about that. Like, where can I go right. to flee from your presence? Like, right, right. We can come in here and lie to each other, yeah, but God's yeah. like, you were there. Yeah, come on, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I know you. I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because shame, shame actually turns into that victim mentality, and that becomes your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And, and you operate in that, like, oh, woe was me, and I wish I had no, and why did I do that, and I didn't have this, and, and it becomes like this, this heavy, depressing state of life that you're living in. Yep. We were designed to do that. We weren't designed to live like that. God, that's not from God. But it, it, it is. It, it, the guilt will turn into shame. Shame turns into that victim mentality mindset. And now you're off. You're outside the community. You're, you're, you're being separated from the, the calling that God has for you, the community that God placed you in. And that's what enemy, enemy essentially wants to get everybody separated and isolated. And that person, you, you see, and I've seen people go through that, that, that process of shame and it turns into this victim thing and, and it's so heavy and it's almost like they're, they're unredeemable because it's so heavy. No matter what you say or what we say, they can't see it. Yep. They can't see God in it. Yep. Well, it's the Cain effect. Right. Right. Literally one generation later from Adam and Eve is, is Cain and Abel, yep. mm -hmm. right? And the Cain effect is shame, right. is, is guilt that turns into an identity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now he lives that way. He mm -hmm. projects that way. And Cain, if you look at, if you trace his lineage, you know, that's where the whole tribal thing begins and, and violence begins and then using technology to mm -hmm. hurt right, yeah. instead yeah, yeah, of build. Yeah. Right. Right. But it started with what? Like it started with literally a worship service. Yeah. Mm -hmm where the, the two brothers come to offer something to God, mm -hmm. and God, for whatever reason, knew your intentions are not right, King. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right? And I love that he doesn't really say what it was, because the goal is that the Bible is so open-ended mm -hmm. to say, where are you in this story? Yeah, you yeah. might be Cain mm -hmm. in your own way. Yep. Right? And Cain responds with this outburst of anger. Why? Because he knows Mm -hmm. Like, you don't really act out of anger if you don't know it was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, anger yeah. usually is like you're masking something. Yeah. You're hiding mm -hmm. something. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And God just gave him a chance. Once again, God being so gracious. It's like, hey, I'll, I'll bless you if you do the right thing. Right. But if you don't, this thing might consume you to the right, point of, right. like, doing something that you're going to regret. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. right? And he lets him live with that reality. That's the other thing, right? Yeah. The, the story of Cain is powerful yeah, because it's, it it's our story. Right. You know, he doesn't let anyone kill him on purpose to say, like, you're going to live with this reality mm. right. of, like, either you're going to embrace your identity in me or you're going to become a victim. Right. And he embraced the victim identity, which he perpetuates through his next generation right. and his kids and his village, his tribe. Like, if again, go look at that story. It's, it's heavy. It's our story. Yeah. yeah it yeah, really yeah. is. Mm. Right. We may not kill physically, but we might kill with words if we don't deal with our own stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so Kate to me, is a, is a great 
il illustration of that reality. These right. stories are way more yeah, powerful right. than people Absolutely. really like yeah. stop to really consider what's right, really right. happening. Yeah. That, that you may be living a cane life right now yeah. without realizing it because yeah. you're blaming people. Right. You're shifting blame. Mm. Right. You know, we've seen that a lot, right? The vain victim mindset, like my dad wasn't there. Okay, but I think everybody has a sad story. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think Facts. All, we, we can do a podcast right now on We on all got them. Yeah, yeah. Got you. <laughs> you know, I think all of us have been affected by our dads you know, yeah. in this room, mm -hmm. right? But here we are, we're all dads now. Yeah, yeah. God says, now what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all dads. Right. What are we going to do with what I trusted you with? Are you going to just perpetuate what your dad did? Mm -hmm. Right. Or are you going to create something new that is going to bless your kids and your kids don't have to be a victim right. Right. of your past? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, your kids can live in such a way that they don't even know you had that yeah, crazy yeah, past yes. that you had. Because that gets, it gets passed down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the victim mentality gets passed down. Like you ever met me somebody that was like a, a hypochondriac? Something's wrong all the time. Yeah. And then you see the kid. Oh, my neck hurts. This I don't feel good. <laughs> it, it was passed down. Right. It, it's a spiritual thing that, yeah. that people don't realize is real. It's, it's real. Mm -hmm. Like, so the power of breaking generational curses is 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 crucial for 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 the life of a believer because this stuff that that happened generations back, mm -hmm. grandfather, great grandfather, grandmother, that that come down. Yeah. The enemy makes sure it goes down to the next generation. Because right. if he if he allows it to go down to the next generation, he can stop that person from from operating in the, the things of the, of, of, the, of the spirit, allowing them to, to be close to God because there's this barrier of victim, uh, this barrier of addiction, this barrier of uh, uh, shame or guilt or whatever they're operating in that was passed down. Like you said, we're all fathers now. The way I parent my sons, I wasn't parented like that. I wasn't parented like that. My father wasn't there. My stepfather was abusive. And guess what? I'm not abusive to my kids and I'm there for my kids. So we have the power to break that, to right. stop that curse from jumping down to the next generation to our kids. Because right. yeah. being a victim would be focusing on the hurt from your earthly father, right. but the practices change your perspective to focus on your true heavenly right. father, right. his character is becoming your own, right. and now that's getting passed on to the next generation. Right. And, and being a victim is a lack of, of self-awareness mm -hmm. to own your emotions, to own your feelings. Like again, we're saying like God gives you the outlet to to say, I'm hurt, I'm disappointed, I, I felt betrayed, or whatever it is, as opposed to like project it to somebody else. And now you have shut down the line of communication because you won't own your own stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And you just want to find a reason to blame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Cain, in all of his mess, is still trying to blame right. his yeah, brother yeah, yeah. Yeah. for bringing the better offering. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's crazy. Yeah. Think about that. Right. Wow. And God said, hey, do the right thing, I'm going to bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Did not register. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I see that all the time. You know what I mean? Like you tell people, hey, take the step. It won't register for them to take that next yeah. step. And but, 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 but you don't understand. No one is like, no one will understand. Mm. Like yeah. everybody's hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Take this next step. It always blows my mind that Jesus goes to a group of men and says, "You want to get well?" Yeah. That sounds like a really dumb right. question. Yeah. But maybe you know something about the human psyche that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe the dude is chilling there. He's yeah. like, yo, man, they pick me up every day. They, play, they drop me here. They yeah, feed yeah. me. I they take care of me. Like, if you heal me right now, I need to, I need to take... I got to say, stop sinning. Yeah. Was he doing the same thing? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's the thing that people don't realize. Like, God may know something about us that we don't. Right, right. So when he says, take this next step, and you're, like, trying to make excuses, right, right. you know? Because he had been, even the crippled guy doesn't answer the question straight up. <laughs> Well, you want to get well? Nobody, yeah, you could have just said yes. Okay well, no one helped me. No one cares. Years you couldn't. The world. <laughs> yeah. I would have been laying right there on the pool. <laughs> you know? But that's the thing, right? Do you really want to get well? Right. Cain, do you really want to be blessed? Or are you just here to blame? And that blows my mind. God's response to Cain. He says, sin is crutching like a tiger to devour you, but you must subdue it and be its master. This is thousands of years before Jesus. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I see that twofold. How do you master sin? You can't. You need to submit to Jesus. But it's not always the big, blatant, demonic influence sin. It's also the sin habits of you just missing the mark. You're being lazy. You're being um, angry. You're being selfish. Like those are sins that you can own that. So that's the beauty of the disciplines, right? The disciplines is meant to put you in the path of overcoming things that have been there for a long time. Right. Right, because they're not all demonic. They right. can just be something you've been doing for so long right, right, right. that these disciplines are like, hey, now let's create these new ways of doing life and create new group patterns in your thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's almost like we talk. You talked about, you know, sugar, for example. Right. How do you overcome sugar? It's like, all right, now I need to have 
boundaries, right. <laughs> right, around me, that I can actually enjoy this thing, right. you know, on a Sabbath day, for example. And I think that's the thing that people don't understand. Like, right. every boundary that God puts around you is for your own freedom. That's mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? And true freedom is not just doing whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. True freedom is to do the things you need to do, right. to stay free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So the disciplines for me is that. It's like, okay, I'm creating now these boundaries for my life so that I don't allow myself to become a victim to anything. Like boundaries are on my phone, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I don't, I don't have social media. You know, I could have waited until social media got the best of me. Because that's what people say, I don't have a problem. It's like, that's not the point. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't give up social media because I have a problem. Mm -hmm. right. I give up to create more margins for myself and to, and to lessen the voices that are coming in daily that's keeping me from the right voices. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? So, but the problem is I see with people is always the, uh, there's nothing wrong, I don't have a problem. Yeah. Or the, 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 the Christianity that drives me nuts is I'm not doing anything wrong. Right. Like that's not Christianity. Right. Right. Christianity is about what you're doing right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like enjoy this walk. Because to some people this is, feels like an obligation, mm -hmm. a burden. It's like, bro, like this is your freedom we're yeah. talking about. Right. This is your way of life right. we're talking about. The last thing Jesus says is go. Go. There's so much in that. Yeah. 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 You, know, you have to pray about that. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> so what... What would you say um, is a discipline that you like just naturally enjoy? Like you just naturally, I enjoy this. Solitude. Amen. Same. Same, Same bro. Same. <laughs> yes. I guess, I guess we have yeah. a few yeah. introverts. Yeah. <laughs> we are introverts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that takes no much effort yeah. for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's yeah. paradise for me. I, I love that's, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My wife would be like, "What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing yeah. at all." Yeah. Right. Actually, it's such a such an easy thing for me that I have to come out of it. Yeah, mm. bro, you know it's real. I mean? It's a real thing. I gotta That's come a real out of it. I'm like, "Oh, I got a family upstairs." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Him downstairs. Him downstairs. <laughs> it's funny because we recently got chicken, so it's like my new hobby. So I'm like out there working in the yard, working with the chicken coop and everything. And my wife is like, I know that needs to get done, but that's something you can do by yourself without the kids. Mm. I'm inside with all of them. So she's like in the window looking at me being jealous, <laughs> saying like, must be nice doing something productive without a kid on you. Let's switch. So even like with the yard work, so going back to Sabbath, yeah. I realized I don't want to do it on Saturday mornings anymore because I really want to take my Saturdays and be with my family yeah. and not take four hours to be away from them taking care of outside. Yeah. So when I get home, I'm tired. But if I do 30 minutes, three days throughout the night, that frees up my Saturday. So put the kids down to bed for 45 minutes. I'm outside taking it chunk by chunk. And going back to community, you know, I shared this a couple of weeks ago. But for the first time in my life, I'm cutting grass. I didn't know how to do it. So I talked to you, Pastor Tim. I talked to a couple other people. I'm like, I don't know how to cut grass. I love cutting grass. I was going too low. I wasn't like raking afterwards because I don't have a bag, so I was leaving it cutting the grass. And so I talked to a couple of men. I could have Googled it, went on YouTube, but like actually talking to men in the community yeah, were yeah, yeah. teach me how to cut grass. Right, right, yeah. It brought us closer together, and now I'm doing it the right way. Yeah. You know, um, I was telling my wife this the other day. I'm not handy at all, like at all. You know, to like talk about shame. Yeah. That's why I find shame. <laughs> you know, that I'm a man and I'm not very handy. Right. Um, like this dude is a carpenter. <laughs> And, and I'm like, man, what a beautiful gift. I wish I could build something. If I build something, it's not going to go right. Uh, but I was telling my wife this. I said, it hit me, though, the other day. I, was, I don't know. I was praying about it. Or it just came to mind that, oh, okay, that's how other men feel about the Bible. They feel inadequate. They feel like, I don't know how to do this. You know, The same way I feel about not being handy, some dudes in our church feel like, that's how I feel about how you talk about these things. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. so natural to you. It's so fluid to you, right? Which made me really have a different understanding, appreciation right. for the fact that God has wired us differently. Yeah. That's why some of these disciplines are uphill, yeah. some are downhill, because some of them you have to really sure. develop that, that desire mm -hmm. to grow. You know, because it's funny. You know why I like cutting grass? Because it takes no effort for me. It's just like, oh, I can just, yeah, yeah. it's mindless. Uh, but you tell me to build something, I'm like, I don't think like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it really made me appreciate the fact that God wired us so differently, you know. And that's why we have to keep doing our best to encourage people to not get, again, don't get tied in well doing. Like, you may feel like I'm failing on my prayer life or I'm failing on my generosity or whatever. It's like, no, like, 
the key is compound interest. Right. You know what I mean? Right. The key yeah. is not to give up and not to compare. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's the other thing we have to be careful with. It's like the comparison thing is a thief of joy. Absolutely. It's like, you know, God, why are you the way he did? Mm-hmm. You know, I thank God that you guys are way more uh, blessed in certain areas, right? Because it's like I can, I can learn from that. I can glean from that. And also I can give you an opportunity to serve me which might make me feel vulnerable, but it's, mm-hmm. it's a blessing because that's how collectively the body's supposed right, to work. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I love the fact that in this church we have people with all kinds of skills and abilities because mm-hmm. it's like, man, thank God for right. that. Because yeah, right. we'll be stuck, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I needed to go figure yeah. stuff out of my yeah. holes everywhere. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, Even anyway. in our relationship of how we connect with God, because for me, so, E, you're an amazing worship leader. A practice I've had to grow in is in simply enjoying the presence of God through singing. That does not come natural to me. Even like the Psalms, like that's not where I naturally gravitate towards Scripture. Me, I'm going to the epistles. I'm going to the Gospels. I'm going to Romans. The prophetic books and Psalms I struggle with, but I've had to grow to appreciate because God wired me. So like in a worship service, I'll be reading the lyrics and thinking about the verses behind the lyrics <laughs> instead of actually worshiping God. That doesn't come natural. I struggle with that. But it's not an excuse to not worship. It's not an excuse to not raise my hands and get out of my head. So for those of us that sometimes it's easy for us to get in our head, that's not an excuse. Don't let that be a stumbling block for you. Right. We're like, all right, Lord, teach me to slow down, to not think, and to simply put my focus on you and sing. It's not unmanly to sing it's not unmanly to read emotions because i have emotions and there is something powerful about getting out of my head and putting god in his rightful place through music through song it's powerful it's what my soul needs but for so many years i beat myself up because it's like why am i perfectly okay with just thinking about the verses right now behind the song yeah it's like no dre you need to learn how to sing yeah Yeah. Yeah. second chronicles 20 blew my mind and we've been told this when the army went out they would send the musicians first and in this case, Jehoshaphat is going out into war, and before they even step out, God's going to win the war for them. He got, they got the word for it, but they needed to still go to the battlefield. And as they were going, they sang just a small chorus, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. And that's when God swept in and defeated the army for them. And it's such a powerful thing. Like, singing isn't soft. It is strong. Right, and right. God attunes his ear to when we lift our voice in worship, mm-hmm. because we worship him. When we pray, you can't get praise if you don't have a posture of worship. If you don't see him as God, Lord of all, he doesn't listen to words. He listens to praise and worship. And you have to have your heart attuned to him. And then he attunes his ear to us. Um, But what I wanted to say about solitude, because a practice in solitude that hasn't been easy, because I can worship all day, put me on the piano, just me and God, I can do that all day. One thing I've been working on and kind of leaning into is just listening to the wind. So when I go for a run or go for a walk, because that's where I usually find my solitude moments, I just listen to the wind. And just listen to whatever nature is bringing at me in the moment. Because when we look at the prophet Elijah, it wasn't in the other things. He w- it was in a small, still whisper. Right? Mm. And God speaks through the wind. Right. So it's like listening to the wind, what the waves are saying. I know that sounds weird to say, but like there, there is a sound coming from it. Oh, so like yeah, hearing yeah. what it's saying, it's just like letting your soul and your spirit and your body just hear that noise. Yeah, yeah. And just let it calm you. What I do to go to sleep is I'll play the ocean or the wind on my phone. And that puts me to sleep like that. Mm. So how do you, um, my wife just asked me this the other day, how does God speak to you? How, do you? how does God, how do you know God's speaking to you? Because we all unique. Yeah. Right? How do you know? Because someone can hear that and be like, man, I don't, yeah. I don't hear anything. Yeah, yeah. You know? He usually speaks to me through my imagination. Mm-hmm. So... So, for example, I cannot sit at a piano. (laughs) But for me, sitting in my backyard or by the ocean all day, and I'll usually just start thinking, and then, you know, somebody or something will come to mind, and I'll just follow that train of thought. And it usually will connect to something that I've read or that I've heard in the Word recently and through my imagination. And honestly, God usually will speak to me through questions or prompting. Again, not audibly, but just a prompting of what's going on in high schools? And then I sit and I start thinking about how I was in high school, something that happened to me, a past experience, and then something recently that a youth said, something that I saw. And then I start connecting dots. And then when I go to the Word and read, it's like, oh, he'll bring it together. So it's more like 
intrinsic. It's more in my soul, not audibly or even clear. Yeah. Sometimes he'll just give me a word, sit. What, yeah. what does sit mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll give me a word like up. What does up mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and then just because you hear something doesn't mean you understand what it means. Right. And just because you think you understand doesn't mean you know when it's going to actually come into fruition. It may be a week later and my wife will say something about something being up. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. random. Yeah, yeah. But like that's usually how he speaks to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me it's... Well, it's unique for everybody, how God speaks to each and every one of us, but he, I, I've heard in the spirit, in, in my soul, like, you, you, like to your point, promptings, a word. For me, I'm very visual, so I'll look at something and this light bulb will go off like, oh, wow, what, what is that? Why is that like that? Who created that? And then same thing, train of thought will just go. Um, another thing is, I, I'm a big movie guy, and God has spoken to me through movies too many times to count, shows, uh, music, worship. Um, I think it's just being, I don't think God just speaks one way right. all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I believe he, his, his way of communicating to us is very broad. Not just his word, but, but through his still small voice, through the wind, through nature, through things, just through sitting. I, that's one of the, the reasons I love that, that solitude, that nothing box, I call it. Because I can sit there for hours and just go, you know? Ima imaginary, uh, or that, that lane of, of imagining. Um, why do you think Jesus said, you need to be like a child? As we become adults, we forget how to imagine. We forget how to dream. Like, this kid's a... I mean, we, we were all kids, right? We probably jumped off garage roof, like, we could fly. Like, an adult wouldn't do that, right. but a kid would because they, they believe, they have that belief system built in. And, and when Jesus was at that moment, he's like, until you're like, until you're like this child, or come to me like a child. He's mm -hmm. talking about, you need to be a dreamer. You need right. to yeah. be, operate in faith. Mm -hmm. so, to, so sitting there and, 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 you know, being still, like, all right, God, what do you want to say to me? What are you saying? Or well, what Pastor says Sunday, like, what does that mean for me personally? I know, I know the, the, the community aspect, but for me personally, what did that word mean? Why did that, that specific part of the sermon hit me so hard? Because a lot of times, I'll hear a sermon for half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, but there'll be one thing that God kind of mm. pokes at, and it, it becomes singed in my heart. I'm like, all right, I need to really, I need to, I need to sit with this for a minute. Mm. So then I'll go to the word, and I'll, and I'll look it up, and I'll, 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 I'll define a word. If I don't know the word, if I don't know the definition of a word, I want to encourage everybody, whoever's watching, look words up. Look the meaning up. Because what we think the word means may not mean what you think it means. Right. You know what I mean? So when you when sit there and you like internalize how God's speaking to you, dig. Yeah. Dig yeah. for more. Dig right. for more. Right. So I, I think God has, speaks to me in very different ways, in a lot of different ways. For me, I think it's definitely questioning, question, yeah. and and a lot of prompts as well. Like this morning, just to bring you into like what happened today. This morning, I go to the gym around five thirty. Right? Telling Jim and Jesus, a lot of things happen at the gym. <laughs> I'm at the gym and I'm doing um, doing calf raises. I'm trying to get these calves nice, um, <laughs> and I'm doing the calf raises. And there happens to be this lady. Uh, on the next station over, and I'm looking over here, just trying to do calf raises, and I look, I just see this big bulge. I look at her, and she's pregnant. And I stop, and I'm like, should I ask her if she's pregnant, or when you're due? Like things you never should do. Risky. And I was like, just something was like, ask her. I was like, all right. I was like, so when you're due? She said August. I'm having twins. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I'm so excited for you guys. I don't know her. But usually you create this community happens at the gym if you go at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. So like every, I'm almost met every person there. I almost know most of them by name. Um, and this lady I've never met yet. So I didn't ask her name. I just said, oh, that's awesome. Pray for you guys. Um, twins, that's crazy. Going from zero to two, that's wild. I just know a friend who just went from one to three. I was like, I have three. And we did it increments of one. And that was a blessing in itself. <laughs> I walked away, got my stuff, and I was going to leave. And... Something just in me said, pray for her. I was like, like nah, I'm going to walk out. So I'm walking out, and she, there's a station at the end towards the door. 
And I'm like, I feel like this is a test. And if I don't do it, either I'm missing an opportunity for her or God, or I'm missing an opportunity that God is setting up mm -hmm. um, to see if he can trust me. So I'm like, dang it. I was like, all right. So I, I head over to this. I was like, hey, I know this might sound weird, but is it, is it okay if I pray for you? And then I said, hey, what's your name? His name's uh, Hannah. I said, my name's Elijah. And then it says, okay, put my hand on your shoulder. Put my hand on your shoulder. And I prayed this prayer. And at the end of it, she said, it's a beautiful prayer. And I left. And I was like, God, I don't know what that was for. I don't even know if that was you. But I would never do that in a million years in a gym. Like, who would? It's a gym. I'm trying to get my, my pump and leave. Right. And it was one of those moments, like, God's like, that's my voice. Get attuned to it a little boy, mm -hmm. a little better. Like, because he, he convicted me. He's like, because I told you to do some stuff. And you missed them because you thought that was just a crazy idea. That was me. So more and more I'm realizing that's fresh today. Is like him is like a, a little bit of, of a question. Like, are you going to do it or are you not? Yeah. That's, stuff, that's what I'm finding out. Yeah. Mm. He very rarely tells me things. He's usually asking questions. Yeah. Or nudging, right? Yeah. Like it's just a nudge. It's just an inkling. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, go this way. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about this? Really? Yeah. Really? really? <laughs> You know, it's, uh, you know, every, almost every day I try to post something on our team members Slack and it comes from that, you know, I'll wake up in the morning and all of a sudden I'll have this thought, mm. you know, and I'm like, why am I having this thought? And then I start to develop it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like every morning he, cause my, my prayer desire was, um, you know, when I left social media a couple of years ago, it was like. The goal there was to spread the message, obviously. That was the main thing. And so I decided, all right, then I'm going to make our team members the, the focus. You know, it's like, so since then, that's how God has been kind of giving me stuff that he would normally, I would post it on social media. It's like, no, I'm going to feed our people. Yeah. And I think as long as you have that heart for other people, God right. will always yeah. speak to you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That like, I don't have to force anything in the morning. If I don't have anything, I don't have anything. Right. You know what I mean? But it's like usually something will come and I'm like, man, I'm putting these thoughts together you know, like effortlessly. There's a, there's a reason for that. And that's the intentionality. He'll give you a thought. You got to go dig though. Yeah, you got to dig. Right, right. You know what I mean? You got to, absolutely. And I think that's the thing, to be aware. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because not every day is going to tell you pray for someone. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that awareness, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That you don't know when he might say, because I've had those moments where you miss it and you're like, I oh, just, yeah. you, you can tell you missed yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I missed that one. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's like, you know, go ahead, you did. Yeah. <laughs> you did, yeah. you know. But in a few weeks, I'll give you another chance. <laughs> you know, but really that prompting, you know, because again, it's so unique. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife gets prophetic dreams, like for real, like stuff that's come to pass. And I'm like, I pray to get prophetic dreams, I get nightmares. <laughs> Seriously, it's almost guys like, this ain't your lane, boy. <laughs> this ain't your lane. I'm serious. I, I told him, I said, listen, I, I've asked God, give me prophetic dreams, I get nightmares. Some of the guys like, that's not your lane. You know, be, be glad I speak to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I really think that he's so unique that it's like, it blows my mind. When I hear people talk to me about Sundays, for example, like you said, like, God, what is it that for me? Like, blows my mind when people get out of messages. I'm like, I didn't even say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that you're in the room, mm -hmm. he will customize it. Yeah. That's why I tell people, like, just be in the room. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like, pray at nights. Like, yesterday, the, the thought that I had when we done was like, man, I think stuff happens here at prayer nights that we wouldn't in a million years understand it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We won't understand it. The fact that we're praying together. Mm -hmm. And it hit me. I just listened to um, when God told Ananias, hey, there's a guy coming to you. I want you to go. Yeah. But here's a line that messed me up. He said, he's praying to me right now. Mm. Mm. It's like, wait, why? He's telling us, go he's talk. He's praying to me right now. So we don't know what prayer does. Right, 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 right. Think about that, right? So last night, I'm like walking away like, man, we don't know the fullness mm. right. of what just happened here. Mm. Think about Daniel praying and fasting. And there's something happening in the spiritual yeah. realm, preventing, prolonging the response. Right. Yeah. Right. We have no idea what's We have no idea what's really happening. Really happening. No you know, that's why, again, our goal is to don't get tired and well doing, like keep sowing because yeah. you will reap a harvest. It may not be fully here. It may not be, it may be in the next life. Or it may be that you're, I, I made me think about my grandmother last night. I'm like, man, my memory of my grandmother was like, because I spent a lot of time with her 
was waking up and always finding her in her couch with her Bible. Mm-hmm. But by that time, she had already been to church and went to, went to pray already. Like faithfully at 530. Mm-hmm. To the point that the pastor gave her a key to wow. the church. Because yeah, wow. he's like, I can't keep waking up. Every- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, it's like she could pray at home, but she felt that conviction. Yeah. Which I never had a chance to really cause talk to her about this stuff. Because when I got saved, she passed. But I think she laid out all those foundations, you know what I mean? That I'm like, because I was thinking about the dude who did all the research on what happens after we die, you know, they're all, like, he studied, he's compiled over 1,500, I think, testimony stories of people who have had those experiences. And the common denominator of the people who went to heaven is always that group of people that welcome them. And I'm like, I have no doubt that my grandmother will be there. You know what I mean? It's like some of the people that paved the way through her life and her legacy. And that's why to me it's like, man, don't get tired and well-doing. You don't know. Right. You don't know what's happening. The enemy will love to discourage you. Absolutely. Nothing's happening. What's the point of praying? You, you're not seeing anything. Right. And it's like, no, you don't know. Right. I you don't. a testimony about yeah. that. Someone's been praying for their wife for five years and finally seen the fulfillment of her being open to like receive God where she's ex- exposed a few things in her life and she felt like it's holding her back. Yeah. So like his consistent prayer... Oh, over five years, you don't see it right away. No. Sometimes you do, but like yeah, yeah. his consistency in praying for his wife allowed that door to open for her to actually receive that salvation. To be yeah. yeah. Oh, it's 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 fascinating when you get a glimpse into that other realm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's happening all the time. We just don't always yeah. aware of it. It's that st- again the, the the powerful story of Elijah is that Elijah was convinced that God was going to manifest Himself, but he missed it because he thought it was going to be a certain way. You know, and then God flipped the script and says, no, I'm not coming that way. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, can we be aware? Right. And, and that's, that's we live, in, we live in, in the age of distraction. Yeah. Where the art of thinking and pondering is slow, actually not even slow anymore. It's fastly, quickly moving away because we, we get a word from God, right? Where to sit and ponder, think, go into the word, dig. But what do we do? Oh, Instagram. And the enemy robs that distraction. He uses this tool. He uses technology to rob us of, of that word because it wasn't meant to just go in and out. It was meant to hit and sit. Right. Hit and sit. Right. And ponder, all right, God, why, why am I stuck in Matthew right now? I know this word is for me. Then we get frustrated if we don't hear God in the moment or, or we don't have the next, we don't get the next step. And then what do we do? technology, social media, and we, we miss the move, we miss the word, we miss because we're distracted. Hmm. Humanity has never been as distracted as it is right now. Mm-hmm. Think before, before we had the internet, before we had social media, life was slower. People had to sit with some things, right. read some books, like, you know, have conversations in, in a healthy community to dissect some stuff or, or, or get a different perspective or insights on things. That's why community is so important, so powerful. Like, we're all, we're all so different. We're all wired so differently, right? And we all have strengths that each, we each don't have, but we can pull from. Like, so for instance, if I have a history question or, or it's something that's historical, whose door am I knocking on? That man right there, because that, he lives there. He lives, he lives in that lane of history. And that's the beauty of community. Like when, you, when, you're in, when you're in a group of people who are so different and you may lack in an area, best believe somebody in that group has something that you need. Mm-hmm. And we can now pull from that person. You know what I mean? Someone that's, and, it, and it can be something as small as, hey, you need to just sit with that for a minute. But that's the thing, right? It's sitting. Right. That is such a challenge. Because right. we don't want to sit and think because your thoughts are scary. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the struggle yeah. that it's 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 easier for me to just check out mm-hmm. scroll because sitting with my thoughts is a scary thing. Mm-hmm. We're restless. But I think it's even scarier to not yeah. sit with your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, what I was saying on Sunday that really messed with me is is the what is the alternative of not working out your salvation? You ever thought about it that way? You ever thought about like what is the alternative? Not hell, but hell on earth basically. Right, right, right. right. You know what I mean? A stagnant person a person who's always struggling, never gets by, never overcomes anything, 
selfish, prideful, egotistic, angry, right, right. frustrated, distracted. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's the thing that, that drives me nuts about the whole, I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah. But that wasn't never the goal. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, could you imagine standing before God and just say, I didn't do anything wrong? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how sad is that? Right, right. Like, that there is no real, like, life happening because I never really sat with something yeah. and wrestled with it. Love the Lord of God with all your mind. Yeah. Like, that's thinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's sitting with things. That's yeah. like unpacking, you know, digesting clearing the debris out of the way, really get into the pearl, right? right. Like, that's, that's not easy. Right. That's hard work. Yeah. Thinking is hard work. Is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, real thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, think before you speak. Think before you move. Think before you make a, a bad decision or choices. Like, just this morning, I'm praying right. for wisdom. Yeah. Like, you know, Psalm 53 today says, the fool says in his heart, there's no God. Mm. He, he's not wise. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, think about that. He's saying atheists are dumb. You know, like, get offended, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he's saying. It's like, man, you, are you crazy? Like, you really looked at the whole universe and went, nah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's your mind. Yeah. <laughs> at least you got to open the possibility of something. something. Right. Yeah. But to say, Nothing. no, yeah. it's, it, that, that's a lack of really thinking through things, wrestling with things. And I think that's the struggle that I see is, is that, man, these practices are powerful, but you've got to practice them. Yeah. And one of them, solitude is what? It's a lot of thinking. Yeah. A lot of, like, sitting with yourself, wrestling with yourself. Because it's to know yourself, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, to, it's, uh, it's that old saying. I think Socrates says, right? A life not examined is not worth living. Right. But how many people sit and really examine yeah. their, their thinking life and how it's affecting how they're actually yeah. doing their marriage, yeah. doing their parenting? Yeah doing your budget, like all those things mm-hmm. come down to thinking. That's why we, we live in an addicted society, because no one's thinking. No one's thinking. This might sound crazy, but a lot of these addictions could go away if you just sat with yourself yeah. <laughs> and really let the Holy Spirit get a hold of you. But we've made the addiction the beast right, right. Yeah. that cannot be overcome. Right. You know what I mean? And we made science gods. Mm-hmm. So we look for anything in, in the scientific world to medicate myself, to try to, like, it's like, good luck with that, right. you know, because science cannot answer all your questions. It just can't. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Science not even trying to do that. Yeah. We have made science that. It's crazy. God, God created so many beautiful things. I mean, if you were to walk outside and, and take a leaf off a tree and examine it and really look at it, and you see the veins and you see how it's shaped, and you sit like, man, God, how did you create this thing? But we... We go outside and we, we walk right past the trees. We're not looking at nothing. We ain't looking at the grass. We're thinking about the next thing we need to open in our app and what do we need to scroll on. What do we? And it's just like, man, God gave us so many things to sit, think, and ponder on, because they're all connected, yeah. right? I mean, look look at look up at the stars in the middle of the night. Mind blowing, mind boggling. People are missing the beauty of God every day because they're stuck. And that routine of scrolling, they're stuck in that routine of, I need this, I need to hear that, I need to watch this, I need to do that. I need to. We're missing God. Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then, I, at least once a day, I'll go in my backyard and I'll just stand there. Right on my deck and I'll just stand there and I'll look at the trees. And I'll look at the water and I'll look at my kids running around, I'll look at my dog and I'm just like, thank you, Lord. This is beautiful. And that's it, gratitude, focusing on what God has blessed you with and not focus on what you don't have. Don't have, have right. Well, gratitude is a discipline in itself, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. There's no way you're going to be depressed if you wake up every day and find a specific reason to be grateful. Mm-hmm. Like, be specific yeah. and name it and say it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Because why? You gave your mind a command. Mm-hmm. We're going to be grateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Depression is what? It's always looking at the, what you don't have, what yeah, you're lacking, yeah, yeah. or what you're still trying to get. Mm-hmm. And then you go here, you, you compare. Right. Oh, yeah. Of course you're depressed. Right. You know what I mean? A lot of the stuff is not rocket science. You know what I mean? Right. It's just so practical, waking up every day and just be grateful. That's why I'm so thankful that I, I, I was born and raised in a third world country. Because it makes you grateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, yeah, we didn't know we were poor. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know you don't have much. Yeah. <laughs> But then you come here, you're like, whoa, we were poor. <laughs> you know? But I'm so thankful that it stays with you. Mm-hmm. That 
I get guilty now by what we have. Like, my wife will tell you, I look at the closet, I'm like, we have too much. Every season, I'm like, get rid of, we gotta get rid of stuff, it's too much. And I'm trying to instill that in my kid. They don't know any better, they're, they're Americans. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Everything there's more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, but gratitude to me is such a powerful discipline. Yeah. Like, just waking up every day, finding specifically a reason why you're grateful. You gave yourself a command. And that's the thing, we don't give yourself enough commands. You know what I mean? Like, give yourself a... Like, you said, think on these things. Yes. yes. Whatever's true, noble... The dude is in jail. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know how many commands you got to give himself to not get depressed in that moment? Like, yo, I'm preaching the gospel, and here I am in jail because I'm trying to be faithful to Jesus. Mm. But in jail, he's trying to encourage those outside. Like, hey, fix your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix them. Right, you know? Right, right. Like, on what's true, noble, excellent, praiseworthy. And what do we do? We just let our thoughts go anywhere you know and wonder why yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy today an article blew my mind uh in the jungles of amazon they gave them this new like Starlink that elon musk created oh, to get yeah, yeah. to get internet now they're just the porn yep. in the amazon jungle yeah. and the elders are like oh. what do we do but the funny thing is the elders are like what do we do? But don't take away our internet. <laughs> the elders. The elders. The elders. The elders. Right? Crazy, right? In the middle of nowhere, they find the internet and they get addicted to porn. That would have never happened in a million years for them. They would struggle with lust for sure, because that's a human compulsion. But like now, they're addicted to the to the porn because the internet was dropped in the middle of a Amazon Amazon jungle. You can't make this stuff up, yeah, but what this stuff does right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. the human psyche. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That, 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 it's, this thing is, it's a monster because it, it's, it's making people be so ungrateful, so unhappy at where they're at in life because of all of these, all of these sound bites of people's lives. Oh, they're on a yacht. They got a bench. They got this. They ain't got none of that. For the most part, they don't. But that's what we see. That's what people see. They're like, oh, man. I got a busted Nissan Altima. I ain't got that. What are they doing? So, so then that 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 thought of wanting more, needing more, overpowers the, like the gratitude. Yeah. Right. We're hardwired as as our flesh is to not be grateful, to always want more, to never be satisfied. We we live our flesh lives in that lane and desires to be in that lane because why? It distracts us from the things of God. Just listen to a psychologist yesterday say that um, the the mental health effect that social media has had on on especially teenagers yeah this is a secular psychologist saying um i don't i i, I want to prolong as much as i can to give my kids a smartphone mm. and so they asked her they like so what do you recommend he goes they shouldn't get a cell phone until they have a driver's license mm. you know to hopefully have some type of responsibility with it but it's like even then it needs to be very wide monitored because yeah. Because what he's doing is, this is where all this mental crisis is coming from. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, kids are living in comparison. Yeah. They are living in the, the my body's not right, mm -hmm. therefore my mind cannot be right. I may not be in the right body. You know, all those things are happening out of what? This, this thing, right? But it, it comes down to what? It, it, you know, it goes back to everything we're talking about, spiritual formation. Yeah. 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 Who are you becoming? Right, right, right. What's shaping you? These are practices. Mm -hmm. This is the practice the wrong way. Right. You know what I mean? You're, you're practicing the ways of the Antichrist, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to say to people, like, it's not just about that one person. It's about the worldview right. and how you live in life. Mm -hmm. You live in life Christ-like or you live in life Antichrist-like. Right. You can't just remove the Antichrist. You have to replace it with Christ. That's it. Right. Because more Antichrist is going to be the same spirit just manifesting itself differently. Right. That's why you never overcome an addiction unless you replace it with something else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Like, if you don't have an aim, a goal, you will digress. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's just the way human nature is, right? That's why we're all talking about fitness right now because yeah. you're like, you digress. Right. Right? You, you get a dead bot very really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, think about that. Like, mm -hmm. here we are now going the other way. Like, yeah, we gotta do something. We're not yeah. gonna go to the Olympics, but we need to do something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make this right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you gotta be healthy because it's all connected. Mind, yeah. body, and spirit. Like, it's all connected. I see people struggle in church not because they can't do this, but because they come in caked up in so much mm -hmm. 
It's like, you think an hour in 50 minutes in church is going to undo that whole week of crap right, right. from your, the way you're eating to what you're intaking? Like, it won't do it. It's, again, compound interest. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's like going to the gym one hour a week and then eat like a maniac during the week, pound whatever you want to pound, and then think yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's making a difference. No, it's an uphill battle, man, like, that we're facing. Right. And this is one of the major ones. Absolutely. You know, this is a major one. Again, I wish people would not say, I'm not doing anything wrong. Like, right. that's not the goal. Right. That's a sad way to live life. Right. Right. You know, it's implementing the things that is going to make you run on all cylinders, be the best version of you. And I think that's the thing right. that scares me the most is the plateau, mm -hmm. right? It's like, I just got a text this morning from a young man who was like, man, that hit me hard. I don't want to plateau. So I literally sent them the link to the rule of life from the book and say, here's your next step if you don't want to yeah. plateau. Create a rule of life. Mm -hmm. right, right. Like, actually create it. Because that's the only way you make it. 26 years later, I didn't know what a rule of life was, but I knew, like, if I want this, I need to put some things in motion here right. that's going to actually... Honestly, my first conviction was this. If what I just experienced is real, then I need to know everything about it. Mm. Yeah. I'm not going to bank on a blind faith. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was my driving force. It's like, yo, if I just, I just experienced this Jesus, I need to know everything yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I can't say I'm signing on the dotted line without knowing what I signed up for. Right. I think a lot of people do that with church. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, yo, is that how you go about life? You sign a life insurance without like, looking at it and yeah. figure out, like, what did I actually sign? Mm. You know? And that's I think, cool. how sad is that, right? To go to a church building for years but never really know, mm. what do I actually believe? Why do I believe this? Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden, someone hits you with something that throws you off, you yeah, deconstruct. Right, yeah. It's like, you never constructed. Right, right, right. <laughs> what are you deconstructing? <laughs> you don't know which, yeah. <laughs> it's not real. It was never real. Yeah, you wow. didn't have a foundation. Right. This whole thing about practicing the way is what? It's Matthew 7 when he said, those who built their house on the rock right. and the winds came and the blue, like all the stuff comes to destroy it, mm. can't. You're on solid foundation. Right. But if you're built on sand, this whole deconstructionism to me is like, you built it on sand. It was yeah. sand all along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was never rock. Like, someone should not be able to take you off your game that easily. That's so true. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? If you're solid. Yeah. You were never solid. Right. It's just that they, they blew. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went. You know when people are like, ah, it can't be real. It's like, you know, you think you're the, you were the first ones ever in the history of this world to think about those things. Mm -hmm. That's what's fascinating to me. Yeah. Like people talk about it like they're the first ones yeah, to yeah, ever yeah. question the problem of evil. Is God really, is the Bible really the word of God? Right. And we're the first ones ever. Like, oh my gosh, this CS Lewis called a snobbery. It's like, yeah, it's the, snobbery. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, snobbery yeah. of like, oh, we're, we're the new generation. We know. It's like the kid who told me, I don't know what I'm talking about because he just started reading his Bible. It's like, oh, it's talking about snobbery. You started two days ago. I started 20 something years ago. But you already know everything. Wow. You're doing great. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Pharisees knew their word. Yeah. And miss Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. How does that happen? How do you, someone just asked me this yesterday in our crew. How is it that you can know the word but miss Jesus? Because he was like, Pastor, how is it possible? He's a new believer. I love it. I love new believers. Mm -hmm. Great question. He's like, man, reading Acts, blow my mind. Mm -hmm. How is it possible? A week, few weeks ago, you preached about the fact that he will say, I never knew you. Yeah. But even though you did all these amazing things, you know, how does that happen? I think it goes back to, you know, I believe it's the prophet Isaiah who says, you know, that generation will have eyes, but they won't see, ears, but they won't hear. And Jesus repeats that again in the New Testament. And it goes back to that heart position. Do you truly desire a relationship with God? Or are you just spewing knowledge? I have no interest in learning about cycling. No interest, no hard desire to thrive in cycling. But right now, I can watch a seven-minute YouTube video. I can read an instruction manual on how to be a good cyclist. And I can hop on a video and give you a bunch of facts about being a cyclist. And you can listen to what I just said that's true, run and thrive in being a cyclist. But then I go back home, don't have a bike, and don't care about it. So when the owner of a bike shop calls to account, hey, I've been watching your videos, but you don't know me and have no desire for this practice that I'm giving my life to, yeah. get away from me. It's the same as that thing with God, where even the practices, you could be doing these practices 
and not have the intention of growing closer to Jesus. You're treating it almost like an idol. Well, a means to an end. Right. Mm -hmm. When Jesus is not the means in the end. Mm -hmm. I've seen this. People will come to church because they just want to improve their lives. Yeah. Not to know God. Right. So once life gets a little better, yeah. I'm out. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it over and over again. Mm -hmm. When Jesus is not the means in the end, you will use His principles yeah. for a better life but not necessarily know Him. And that goes back to what right. you were saying, where is your life constant prayer? Mm -hmm. Where, Lord, I desire to know You, so I'm going to have ears to hear You in a sign, mm -hmm. in a car that's driving by, yeah. when I read my word, in a one-on-one yeah. -on -one conversation, yeah. Yeah. when I'm thinking, when I have my imagination, when I go to sleep and have a dream. Like, you're always speaking because I have a heart for learning, understanding, because right, right, right. I want You. Yeah. He'll yeah. speak to you through my... My three-year-old son doing yeah. something. Yeah. It's like when you have eyes to see and ears to hear, he will speak. Are you listening? It's right. a heart position, right? I heard a woman say something really powerful the other day. She said, you know, I was interested in the Bible, so my pastor challenged me to go read it. She says, I read the whole thing, and I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and and he, she went to the pastor and said, man, I read the whole thing. I didn't even like it. And he challenged her, go read it again, but read it like it's, it's God's word, and it's not your word. It's not what you want it to be. You know what I mean? Because that's how we do it. Because everything is about us, right? And it's like, now I'm going to read this. Oh, didn't speak to me. I'm reading a great book, which um, I highly recommend. It's, how, it's called How Not to Read the Bible. <laughs> you know? Because if you don't know the context of it, and you put yourself in, a, in, in the wrong context, you're going to get the wrong understanding of it. Right? right. right? But he said something powerful in that book. He said, he said, listen, God's word was not written to you, but it was written for you. Mm. <laughs> and that jacks up the, uh, us, yeah. Americans. We think it's everything about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every four years, we put an American president in this right, thing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, because, because John was talking about us in the book of Revelation. We're the eagles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was in Asia Minor, but for now he's talking about the America, Amer <laughs> just America, though. Isn't that crazy? For God, so loved, yeah. for God so loved the world. And we're like, for God so love America. Yeah. But most specifically, me <laughs> in America. You know, and I think that's where the disconnect becomes. It's, he's not the means in the end. He's a means to win in for some people. You know what I mean? It's like, how can I use the principles to get ahead in life or to get a wife or to get a husband, to get, to get, to get, to get, to get. And then, unfortunately, a lot of American churches have bought into that. What do we do? We do all this series about your best version of you. You know what I mean? This is about you. And, of course, we're going to end up with something, a caricature reality of what he actually meant Absolutely. that yeah i wrote this for humanity mm -hmm. right but it's not just specifically for, majority of you in the bible is plural that's the other thing that jacks us up yeah because yeah, yeah. he's talking about community right you know i was telling this guy yesterday in our in our um, small group is that the struggle is this was never meant to be read just alone right. it will jack you up you create cults oh, when you just read it alone right. you know what i mean like, if we don't have these conversations mm -hmm. yeah. and bounce off ideas off each other, then we can go off and do our own little thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you made it about you. Everyone's right in their own eyes. Yeah. Right. And the plur it's the plural you that he emphasizes the most. This thing was meant to be, meant to be a community from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know? And if we're not doing that, then yes, it's not going to make sense a lot of times. It's not going to, like, make you excited. Yeah. Right. Because he didn't tell you. It's like, people read it like it's a horoscope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what's he gonna tell me today? Yeah, right, right. Like, I've been challenging even my own kids with like go into you version and read the verse of the day, right? I'm like, hey, don't just read the verse of the day, read the chapter. Yeah. Right. Understand why that verse was there. Yeah. Because if you don't, one verse will jack you up. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do all things through Christ. Yeah. That gives me strength. That, that, I literally yeah. I literally <laughs> just talked to Caden about that. Yeah. I was like, What's every athlete's favorite Bible verse? Philippians 14, 14. Yeah, exactly. I, I can do all things through Christ to give you strength. You're not even looking to glorify Christ. You're just thinking about you winning that game. Mm -hmm. But I was like, what's the context? Paul, go read the whole thing. Paul is in jail. Paul is saying, like, man, I've learned to deal with having or not having. You know, it's about contentment. I can do all things through Christ was about contentment, not winning an NBA championship. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. I literally just talked about that. I was like, "Give me the whole thing. Get the full context. Mm -hmm. Because you can take the Bible out of context. Yeah, and I think that's what happens. It's like we take the Bible out of context. We do what we want to do. And then we say, God, co-sign this. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm good. Yeah. And then he says, I don't know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. You're doing your own thing. Right. You're just using me. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even going back to like getting a word from God, when he gives you a word, it's not for you. <laughs> like he says to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. He was talking to not just Isaac, not just Jacob, but for the millions. You know, it's like, all right, I'm going to give you this land. They didn't see that for hundreds of years. So going back, it's like just because you hear something from God, Abraham, which he did mess it up, but he could have messed it up even more thinking like, okay, I need to see it now and start forcing it and implementing things. So it's like just because you hear something doesn't mean that you know what it's going to mean and doesn't mean you know when it's going to mean because you're never going to see it. Well, here's, here's everybody else's favorite Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you hope in the future. Is that real? Yes, but keep reading. Yeah. But it says, hey, 70 years from now, <laughs> yeah. 70 years from now, yeah, but in the meantime, here's what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. Plant vineyards, get married, mm-hmm. get situated in Babylon, because yeah. it's going to be a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But no one reads the rest. Yeah, right, right. But God has a plan. Yeah. Yes, he does. But he said 70 years from now. Back to David. Mm-hmm. Gets anointed. Yeah. A decade later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kills Goliath. Years later through the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About 15 years probably. Right. Running from Saul. Running from Absalom. His own son. Right. Think about that. He's running from his own son. That's your anointed king. Yeah. yeah. Joseph in the dream. Joseph in the dream. dream. 15 years. Yeah. But I got a dream. <laughs> yeah, you ready? You ready to go to the process of that dream? That's a whole other podcast. Yeah, yeah, that, that is, that is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, can you go through the process? Mm. You know, fifteen years later. Or right, let's look at Moses, burning bush moment, and had the humility to not just run with his mandate from God, go, but goes and submits to his father-in-law. Yeah. I don't know about you, but if I'm hearing directly from God, my first inclination is to not go. Pastor Marco, what do you think about this? Well, how many times have we heard that? God told me. But who'd you check that by? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's always funny to me when people like use the guide card. Like, okay, so he doesn't speak to me. Clearly, mm-hmm. speaks to you though. Mm-hmm. You think, you know, Moses? It was audibly through yeah. a bush. You didn't have to pray about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no clear. no humility in saying I'm thinking. I think God spoke to me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what do you think? Hmm. Yeah, right. There's no humility. It's a trump card that right. we use in that. Even the disciples blow my mind when they. We're trying to figure out what this new movement looks like. And they're asking, Gentiles asking good questions. Oh, do we get circumcised? We're grown men. <laughs> you know what I mean? And what about the rest of the stuff? The, the, the Jewish things, how, what, how much of that translates? And they go, let's go pray. Yeah. Yeah. And they come back and go, it seems good to us. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit. Love that. Love that. What humility. Mm-hmm. Where's that mm-hmm. in the American church? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? God told me. Yeah. And then when we go, we do all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. that God never said. Right. You know, <laughs> I was... I was you know, the punk in me wants to be like, hey, what happened to that thing that God told you? Yeah. You know, because I remember like a few years ago when those bunch, bunch of people left, God told them, and they said there was going to be a spiritual revolution. It's like, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to it? Hmm. I thought you guys would be the new Martin Luther's of this generation. Yeah. It's going to bring such revolution. So y'all don't live in church anymore. And go back to pride. God's doing a new thing. No, the new thing is the same thing he has been doing since the beginning. Yeah. Right. Humility is like, ah, new, new, new. No, the new is the same old. Yeah. It may look different, new to you, because you're just coming around to it. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's in our own restlessness Absolutely. that we miss God. Because we want to make something happen. Mm-hmm. I, I battle with that all the time. Like, as, as the, the, the pastor, it's like, sometimes you might think, like, nothing is happening. Mm-hmm. But it's like, so what are you going to do? You're going to make something happen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to conjure up something? <laughs> Just because you feel like something else is happening? Yeah. Or do you going to stay in the pocket? Like I always tell you guys, right. stay in the pocket and wait right. and trust God. Absolutely. You know, it's not time to be scrambling. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's why rookies quarterbacks scramble. Mm. More than that, I mean, that was like, I'm, I'm going to take the sack. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> not losing a yard. Yeah. And that would preach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, take a sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be running 20 yards down and get sacked. And now you're like, you lost 20 yards. That, that would preach. Right. You know what I mean? If people understand that, like, listen, sometimes stay in the pocket, take a sack. Right. You know, don't lose the war, lose the battle. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. But that's a whole other podcast. We can go on and on, yeah. you know. But I think, I think we're going to call it a day here. Yeah. <laughs> no, this was good. But this is what we do all the time. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. But that's the thing. I wanted people to just know, like, these are the conversations we have. And if, if I could create a template for our crews, this is what it should be like. Right. This, we're just having genuine conversations, right. not arriving, just continue the progress towards God's will and His purpose for our lives. But it's by talking that we get anywhere. Right. Absolutely. You know, talking with Him in the private and then talking with each other 
you know, in owning that things, you know, and then getting that about 1%, you know? It's like, at the end of the day, I would say to people, what can you do today? Just do what's in front of you today. Like, out of those nine principles, pick one. That you're like, this week, I'm gonna practice the Sabbath. Or this week, I'm gonna make myself sit for 20 minutes and just try to think. <laughs> just one thing, right. you know what I mean? Like, you're not gonna do all of them all at once, you know? So I do, I do hope that people do at least one thing, because it's progress over perfection. Absolutely. Yeah.